The last three months, the collective has been offered choices from which we would like to build our foundation upon. What beliefs do we want to believe? What beliefs have we taken on from our ancestry line that no longer serve us? And what are the beliefs that we desire to believe? The last three months have been about finding and experiencing autonomy, freedom from external control and influence, finding our independence. It is important now that we remember that we are an interconnected species and that we are here to be of service to others, to join our gifts and share them with this world. Because as we all know, that when we try to do things by ourselves as a one-man island, things come very difficult. It's harder to shift when it's just one person. The last few months have taught me personally about love and what kind of relationships I desire to have in my life. You might see old relationships falling apart and understand that the only reason why we see our tower, so to speak, crumble to ash is so that we can build something completely new from the ash that remains. It's so that we don't continue to make little deviations from our original model and then continue to get the, the same result. I see people, and I've experienced myself, when we experience love and connection and relationships, whether it be friendships or romantic partnerships, we tend to cling and want to hold on to that. The thing to understand and realize is acknowledging what that relationship made you know about yourself. What energy did it bring to your life? And understand that you hold that within you. But because we live on a planet that is a mirror hologram, it is important for us to understand when we are being someone's mirror, we are acting and responding in a way that they have attachments to. Have you ever noticed that you act completely different around maybe your mother, your brother, your sister, than you do with a boss or a colleague? It's important for us to realize when we are putting on a mask or acting in a way that we feel that will be received well by another person, no matter what that connection is. It's important for us to be authentic and be in an authentic alignment. And I think that a lot of people, there's some... Um, a misconception about being honest and being authentic and just being brutal. You don't have to have judgment in order to be authentic. So these last few months and the coming three months are about gaining autonomy, finding our sense of self, finding what is true and right for us, finding what is it that beats your heart, that gives you drive, that gives you motivation? What has the pain you've experienced throughout the course of your life taught you? How can you transmute that pain into knowledge and wisdom that you can give to this world? How can you come together to aid expansion for the collective and for yourself? It's so easy for us to slip into 
a very small little bubble worrying about the potential future that could go wrong, but worrying about a potential future that could go wrong does not serve you. Living here in the present moment now is all we have. So see where your alignment is. See where your thoughts are. Are you thinking about the past? Are you worried about the future? Or are you present in the here and now? Know the truth. Know that you are not your human body. Do not get attached to your physical form. But also, respect that illusion. Respect the fact that your body is here. It is your vessel in which you are able to have and breathe life. So take care of it. If you don't like something about your life, then change it. Don't blame others for it. Yes, the things in your life that the trials and tribulations that you have gone through, they were painful and they've caused you trauma. But you don't have to live there any longer because you have the choice to choose differently. You have the choice to create something from the ashes that remain or lay beaten and broken in that rubble. What do you choose? I'm not going to say that it's incredibly easy to change your thoughts or to live in the present moment. That is why I offer a model to my clients that helps them to gain autonomy, to find their sense of self in order to take the next step and live their mastery, live their divine purpose, find what beats their heart. And there is no shame in asking and seeking that help. Because you deserve to live your highest and best potential. You deserve to live a life that is free from worry about a potential future that could go wrong. I'm sure you've heard me or others speak about the event. This year has been about us all as a collective consciousness remembering the truth, ascending into oneness. But understand that while you sit in judgment and see another's life and have jealousy because you feel, you believe that you are not able to have and gain that type of life for yourself, understand that you are giving your power away to that. We live in a planet of duality and polarity. If you are experiencing the opposite end of a polarity that you do not desire, then feel what it would feel like in your body to experience the opposite. And then go towards that, knowing that it is already yours. But as long as you live wishing and hoping for something, all you are going to do is drain your life force energy because you are killing your road to expansion. It is time for us to not be afraid to join together. Think about the last time you put yourself out there and came together with a group. Did you have fear about what happened the last time when it went wrong? If you don't, great. But if you've experienced trauma and wounds around that, know that you don't need to abandon that part within yourself in order to move forward. You can keep yourself safe without keeping walls and boundaries around yourself. Understand that boundaries is just a sense of self, knowing what you like versus what you don't like. 
And it's okay to state your boundaries. It is okay to state your needs clearly and directly because those that desire to meet those needs will show up. At first, it might be that the people that can't meet your needs clear out of your life, but that's okay because that allows you to have space to bring in the opposite to bring in those that can and will and want to because it makes them feel good to do so. You know, when you're sitting in a space of self-hate, which I lived a lot of my life, it's easy for us to project or it is that we are projecting that self-hate that we feel about ourselves. We're grounding it, anchoring it in to our timelines. We're anchoring it into our vibration. And we are only attracting people that are going to pick up on those frequencies and then they're going to mirror that self-hate to you. But when you go within, don't be afraid to go within. Because if you are afraid of yourself then understand that people are going to be afraid of you. They're going to be afraid to see and feel and experience all of you. If you can't sit with your own self in love or like or try to have compassion for every aspect of yourself, if there's things about yourself that you don't like, you have the ability to change that. As humans, we can morph and shift into anything. I'm sure of it. We are, we don't need plastic surgery in order to change our physical appearance. Everything affects our physical appearance. The thoughts that we hold, the vibrations, it affects the, the water that we drink, it affects the foods that we eat. Understand it is not about an external factor that is causing what you are experiencing today. It is about your vibration. It is about the way in which you think about yourself. What are you telling yourself? It's easy for us to have a war within when we hear that internal antagonist. But understand that internal antagonist has the same intention as the opposite as the goals that you have. It is just trying to keep you safe by keeping you small. If you show that internal antagonist that you have its best interest, that you are gonna keep it safe, that you are gonna be mindful, that you're not just going to bulldoze those fearful emotions, but you're gonna hug and love and own them and bring them with you, then you won't feel that stuckness. It's important to surrender to surrender to allow the universe, source, your higher self to guide you, to ask, what would you have me do? When you're seeking answers, ask the universe and then go on a beautiful exploration or scavenger hunt because those answers will pop up and you'll start to see all of the synchronicities and the ways in which the universe, your guides, your angels show you how incredibly supported you are and understand that no matter how much you feel that your healing or your work isn't being reciprocated or shown in the outside, understand that the feelings that you're going to have when those same tests come up, those ones that challenged you from day one, or that told you that you weren't good enough, or that told you that XYZ is how it is, and there is no deviation from that. Understand that when you know the truth within yourself, that those lies and those illusions, they don't affect you anymore. It actually makes you have compassion and empathy for that mirror that is re reflecting their own self-hate, their own war. And because you've been there, 
you can respond in a way that you desired to experience or what you needed in that moment. Don't close yourself off when you feel that around you. Instead, open yourself up. Share your love. If you get defensive, understand that there's a wound there that is coming up to be healed. Don't be afraid of your triggers. Get excited because you know that you have the way out. And if you don't, then contact a healing per per practitioner or professional that you resonate with. And when it comes to spiritual practices, try out many modalities. Don't get stuck in one way. Get excited about finding your own groove, making your body your temple. If what I've said has rang and resonated truth to you, and you desire to live your own mastery, if you desire to find yourself, if you desire to heal and clear from the trials and tribulations and traumas that you've experienced, then contact me today. Because you wouldn't be a match to even hearing this message if I couldn't help you. And if I can't, I will find you and connect you to someone that can. I have just created a platform for a group, a group meeting once a week of conscious connections. This is a free platform for us to connect, to support one another, to have our sensitivities and our sacredness be honored and valued and supported. And we meet once a week, every Sunday. We meet on the Zoom app, which is a video webinar platform. And if you feel uncomfortable with sharing your face or speaking at first, you can watch the replays on my YouTube channel. Or you can join us through Workspace. Or I can post it live on my YouTube channel. But reach out for that support because it is available. And if you are desiring to find yourself, to live in alignment with your purpose, I offer one-on-one sessions, I offer classes, I offer weekly support so that you can take steps and have tools that actually work. And I'm not saying this because I haven't experienced it myself. I didn't know how to heal my own trauma. But I found the paths and the teachers that I resonated with that changed my life. And it has allowed me to put my gifts, my own gifts that I came in with, and add and make beautiful techniques into my own that are specific to your vibration. So if you're ready to live in alignment with your truth, if you're ready to live your purpose, to find your mastery, then contact me either by visiting my website, KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com or by sending me an email at info at kendradivinepurposementor.com. Also, if you're an alternative healing practitioner, or if you have your own business, or if you just want to share your story, I would love to interview you or to make you a part of my website where I am creating a platform for all different types of healing modalities and spiritual practices and sacred art to be shared in one place. Because I have built a connection and a safety and security with the people 
that I work with and the people that follow me. And so I feel like it is my mission to scout out safe practitioners and we are here together to build this, to work together, to share our gifts, to give our gifts to this world. But I know more than anyone else how difficult it is to step up and be the first one to share your voice. That is why I'm building this community so that you can have the support, the guidance, the hands to hold and shoulders to cry on because you're not alone. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. Share and shine your light brightly. I love you all. Have a good day.